quick update on that Lukoski's device. Um, that's it right here. It's a portable one. It's a small one. Doesn't have the receiving coil and other coils that are next to the coils. Like there's Tesla coils on the original one. It has the coil and then it has a Tesla coil up near that, and then it has a receiving coil with a Tesla coil on it. Um, this puts out up to 250,000 volts. It uses a Tesla coil, and uh, there's eight rings versus 12, but I think it's actually doing its job. But what I've noticed uh, when I use it, I get very close to it, but you got to be careful how close you get to it because you can actually get a little spark. But I get within less than a foot of it. And I use the special protective, if I'm using by my face, I use the special protective glasses, which are made for sun beds, uh, tanning beds, uh, because there's ultraviolet rays that it puts out. Um, now, where I could tell how to get close, how far to get close, how close to get to it, is you go, it's under a foot for sure, where I could start feeling a breeze, and... You, that's really what it feels like. You could feel almost like a little bit of a breeze coming off of it, and that's the negative ions. And um, they're actually being permeated into your body. Now, the theory behind this is that it strengthens your cells versus conquers disease. It actually doesn't work against disease, per se. It just strengthens the body, which the body then, in turn, does its job. You know, that's really what it's supposed to do. Somehow, it's picking up the ether, and the, the Eastern nations call it the chi, you know. But with this Tesla device, it's in with the antenna. Uh, I don't think it's actually what it, I don't think it's actually the frequencies that it's modulating that's doing it. It's somehow it's picking up some type of energy in the universe. Sounds a little crazy, I know. You know, I heard about the Oregon energy and the pet rocks. You know, they get the pet pyramid rocks out there. I'm not too much into that. I'm very much empirical science type person, but I realized that in the 1930s, Georges Lukowski used this device, now the bigger one, not like the one exactly the one I have, um, but he had a 98% success rate with terminally ill people. Wow, you know what I mean? And that was not verified by non-medical people, it was per medical people. He wasn't a doctor, he was a scientist and an engineer, but it was used in hospitals and doctors verified this. And actually some doctors used it later on in Italy up, I think, up until the 1980s. Now Robert C. Beck, Bob Beck, you know the one with the Beck Protocol and all that stuff, he rediscovered that device back in 1963. Now. Uh, he actually made some other devices that were not to the exact Lukowski design, but uh, touted,ly they worked. Especially, they seem to work more in animals than uh, humans. Like I talked about, you know, you have these uh, coils. You can have them on your wrist too. I have them on here. Two copper coils, right? <laughs> uh, they're not joined. That's the Lukowski coil. That seems to work extremely well on plants. It seems to have some effect, pretty good effect on animals. But as you go up the organism chain, you know, in a life chain, whatever the hell it is, the more complex the uh, uh, the life form is, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> um, it, it doesn't seem to work as well. It seems to provide, but, you know, athletes, athletes, you know, people who play golf, people who play tennis, they seem to swear by it. So, I mean, it probably provides some kind of benefits, minor benefits, very, very minor benefits. Now, as far as the Tesla coil-powered multi-wave oscillator, you know, I am not sure. <laughs> you know, it's almost like I can feel a little bit of a surge of energy after using that. It feels like you kind of woke up more. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know. That's subjective. I am not a person that gets into all this hoopla garbage like some of these other people with the, uh, you know, open up the waves. and You know, I'm not into that. I'm very much empirical science motivated and very mathematical. But I have to say that I think there's something to this thing, for real. <laughs> I really do. Even though I don't think even the experts understand it. But what's interesting, getting back to Bob Beck, he talked about it in 1963 when he rediscovered it. And he said that 99.9% .9 of the devices he tested back in 62 and 63, he was tasked with going around in California testing out all these alternative medical devices he said one of them worked out of 120 or so, right? And if he says 
0.9% didn't work. That means only one worked, right? <laughs> well, 1986, fast forward 23 years later, he still talked about it on other conferences um, with Eric Dollard and Tom Brown. I saw some other things on YouTube. And he still talked about it, and he said it was like uh, he made devices that you can that were modeled off the Lukowski device that you could fit in a briefcase. It was on a printed circuit board versus like having the actual copper tubes with the, uh, you know, you saw that thing sparking and stuff. Um, and he says it was very effective. Then fast forward into the 1990s, he's talking about a simple square wave zapper, and he's like ignoring the multi, a multi-wave Lukowski device, right? With his back protocol. I don't know, man. I don't know. He supposedly cured people of HIV, AIDS, and cancer, and he cured himself with cancer, and grew his hair back with a magnetic pulser, according to him, and a simple square wave zapper. You know, I kind of wonder if he was actually doing something else, or maybe he discovered something even beyond the Kulikowski device, because actually the Lukowski device, reportedly, in the 1930s, caused people to grow their hair back, because it wasn't like... Um, something specifically for hair, what it does is it regenerates the cells in the body and it causes people to have less wrinkles. Actually, in the 1940s, they were even showing this device in the early 1940s, I think it was as a beauty device to actually use against wrinkles. And actually, even today, even though in 1952, or 19, I think it was 1952, the AMA um, knocked out the... Uh, the violet ray, and he said it was quackery. They, they still allow it for cosmetic purposes. The violet ray kind of works as a cheap Tesla coil. It works with that little purple spark and stuff. That's why they call it the violet ray. It's in a bulb. They use it for cosmetic purposes. They'll go, like cosmeticians or whatever you call them, they'll go over the skin for the wrinkles, and if there's a mole on the skin or something like that, they'll do that if there's a scar or something that needs to be healed to go over it with that device. But it can't be used for medical purposes. It can be used for cosmetic purposes. But cosmetic purposes, when you're actually healing the skin like that and regenerating tissue, isn't that telling you it's doing more than just, you know, looks per se? It's actually regenerating. So isn't that really admitting, isn't that the medical profession even admitting that it does something where it actually regenerates tissue and re it revitalizes cells. It does to me. So why not the bigger one actually works even more so where you're using this multi-wave oscillator. Wouldn't it regenerate the body more? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I can't say for freaking sure because I think even the experts on this stuff, the ones that have 8 million PhDs, you know, they have all these degrees and PhDs, I don't think they fully understand what's going on because if somebody said um... It does not work or does not work nearly as well when the whole device and patient are put in a Faraday cage because it's actually picking up something in the air. I don't know, some kind of energy that we don't damn see. We don't see. We don't damn see. Whatever. It's doing something else. Sounds crazy, huh? I mean, I definitely am not a person into this kind of stuff, but I do think this stuff is legit because back in the 19... Well, he started using it in the 1920s, but it was back to the 1930s into the early 40s. It was used in hospitals, some hospitals, not all, not popular, not everywhere. But it was used in some hospitals with a fantastic success rate. And when it's, you know, when they have a success rate like that, it's verified by a medical doctor. You know, Lukowski wasn't a medical doctor, but when his device was used in hospitals, and he got the results, and it seen to be, you know, 98% with terminal people. And it wasn't like it's zapping cancer, it's zapping leukemia, or whatever. It's not zapping some kind of bubonic plague or something. It's strengthening the body itself. That's why, in some cases, hair grew back on some people, wrinkles went away, gray hair went darker, and all this kind of shit. Sounds crazy, huh? I don't know. I think there's something to it. I think there's something to it. So I just want to put a quick review out there because the way I'm actually using this device is that I get closer to it because it's a less powerful device. I get close, and it's like going like just that much closer. You'll feel a spark, and you don't want that. You want to be, in my opinion, the way I'm using it 
I'm getting close enough, basically, basically to the torso of the body, you know, not to the face or the head, but to uh, where it's like I feel like a little bit of a breeze. That's what it feels like. It's not actually a breeze. That's actually the negative ions coming off that, and it's probably permeating the cells. That's the theory behind it. So I want to give a quick update about it. Because it seems that Robert C. Beck, with his Beck protocol and all that type of stuff, he talked about it in the 1990s, that was a miracle, um, that cured everything. Um, I think he was actually throwing us, you know, I know people get mad at this, the Beck fans. I think he was throwing us a little bit of a, a bone, like it works. But the real thing that probably worked was maybe this Lukowski thing. I'm guessing. I'm guessing, okay? I am guessing. But the Lukowski thing had a record, very good record back in the 30s and early 40s in the medical hospitals. And then, you know, they stopped using it after he died. He got hit by a car, whatever the hell it was. You know, that was very suspicious because he didn't even want to go to the hospital. It was in New York City. And uh, Beck rediscovered one of these devices in 1963 in a Southern California hospital in the basement. And then... In 1986, he's still talking about it, that it was good. So he had 23 years to evaluate it. He rebuilt, he made some units of his own design and used them. And he said 23 years later that it was working great. It was almost like a miracle. It really worked. And then a mere five years or so later, he's coming out with this simple square wave zapper saying that's the miracle. I don't know, man. Because he can't, he claimed he cured CIA with his Beck protocol in secret and all this kind of garbage. I don't trust what he's saying, man. I don't know. That's just me. That's just me. I'm probably going to, you know, the people into alternative medicine will think I'm bad for saying this. The people who are not into alternative medicine will just think the guy's full of crap. I'm going to say this. The guy was not full of crap because he was definitely in the top of his field. He was a not just a PhD, but he was on the, on the forefront in government and in corporations. He worked very high up in the Defense Department, too, on uh, defending against the frequencies the Russians were using against us and all this kind of stuff. Um, he also uh, you know, has a number of patents, even when he was 18 years old, uh, with the magnet, with the camera flash was one of them. And uh, he had 180 IQ tested later on in life, back in the 1990s. He even had 180 IQ. Genius is 140, right? Now, my IQ supposedly is roughly 130-something, you know? And that's by a couple tests I took a long, long, long time ago. But anyway, um, he was not making a dumb mistake when he came out with this simple square wave zapper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, if anybody wants to try this Lukowski device, the affordable way is to actually get that one from AmazingOne.com. I don't know if it actually works like like a charm, but uh, it seems like you have to get a little bit closer to it. So, but you got to be very careful how close you get to it, and you have to wear you know the um, eye protection for UV rays and all that type of stuff. But it it's uh, very interesting to tell you the truth. To me, it's very interesting because. This may be the big secret in the medical world that's been hidden. Because healing the body and strengthening the body is better than what Rife, Rife did. Royal Rife, Dr. Royal Rife did by zapping pathogens. I mean, to me, it's better. Why not just make the body stronger so it overcomes pathogens, right? It's not really like you're healing it. You're not really, uh, even then, you're not even practicing medicine, are you? You're just making the body stronger, right? I mean, that's all it's supposed to be doing. So uh, it kind of works against anything that's wrong, right? If there is anything wrong. And I don't know. When I saw Robert C. Beck have a full head of hair from being bald, um, and he said it was with a magnetic pulser, I, I, I kind of like wondered about that shit. You know, I was like, I don't know. I have a, I have a feeling... And looking back at some of the, the reports about this magnetic, uh, this uh, multi-wave oscillator developed by Lukowski, some of the people that were bald back in the 30s regained a lot of their hair, reportedly. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's like you could test it, you could try it, and uh, I'm, I'm using this thing for, 
uh, two or three times a day just in 10 minute sessions, very short sessions. So I'm not going to too much on it because even if it is a good thing, I don't want to overdo it. That's, that's another thing. I don't think you should overdo anything. 